I've got a question from John in Adelaide, Australia, who asks, which is better, a framed or a frameless mask? I got you, John, let's dive into it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James and welcome to this, the next in our series of videos that we call Quick Tips. This time we're looking at the differences between a framed mask and a frameless mask and which, in my opinion, do I prefer or I think is better. If you haven't done so already, make your next dive on our subscribe button and we'll head over to the workbench and check it out. You know, it's actually incredible how few videos we have on our channel about masks. Our very first video was about how to buy a mask and I listed mask as one of the first five pieces of dive gear that you should invest in and then not much since and I still stand by my statement and firmly believe that the mask is the most important piece of dive equipment because if you can't see you can't do anything else effectively and in, on top of that, a leaky mask is one of the biggest annoyances and it's one of the biggest barriers to comfort in scuba diving, uh, as opposed to a proper fitting, nice and clear mask that gives you hours of endless scuba diving enjoyment. So we really need to do better there on our mask content. So I thank you for your question, uh, John in Adelaide. First off, I guess we'll go through the differences and then I'll tell you which I prefer and why. And this video couldn't be more timely because just last week I was diving and I had a mask fail on me due to a failure in the design after not very many dives. Uh, so we can look at why that happened and the lessons that I've relearned from that incident. So first off, uh, let's look at the Scuba Pro Spectra here. This is obviously a framed mask, which is made up of five components. So you have the strap, the buckle, the lens or lenses in this case, the skirt, which includes the nose cup, and this hard plastic frame. Now the frame is acting as a clamp or a brace and it's holding the skirt to the lenses. Uh, this mask actually doesn't fit me very well at all. I don't dive it, it's part of my rental fleet. It's nothing wrong with it, it just doesn't fit my face. Moving on. Then you have this mask, which is the VX1 from Apex. Uh, they market this as a frameless mask and on the surface it does look to be a frameless mask, uh, but on closer inspection, you can actually see that they've used two different colors and two different grades of silicon here. And one is forming the boundary, kind of like a soft frame around the lens itself. And then the part that's actually forming the skirt, which is this black uh, silicon, is actually bonded and seamed to the edge of the silicon. So it's kind of what I would call a soft framed mask as opposed to a hard framed mask, but definitely not frameless. Then we have a true frameless mask, which is made of only four components, the strap, the buckle, the, the lens, the glass, uh, and just one piece of skirt, which is molded to actually hold the lens in place. So there's no seam, there's no edges, there's no joins, which means less failure points. The Diverite ES155, I was sent from Diverite. It's not a sponsored video. This just came as part of the package of the dive gear they sent me to do reviews on. It's a great mask, it fits my wide gorilla face, fantastic. The Apex mask, I was super excited uh, to get my hands on when I heard that Apex were releasing a mask. I paid my own cash money for this. It's about $200. This was, up until recently, my go-to mask. And this just tends to kind of seal incredibly well. It's got good space for my huge Roman nose and it fits in the nose cup nicely and it's got a good field of view. So I was very happy with it. I bought it probably at the end of last year. I probably put a total of about, I don't know, 100, 150 dives on it. And it retails for about $200. Imagine my surprise then when one dive, it works perfectly normal, flawless, no leaks, no nothing. Uh, the next dive of the day, I'm at 120 feet and the nose cup decides to separate from the frame. Boop, boop, boop. Uh-oh, right there, where you have this black silicon and then this gray silicon, and there was a bonded seam there, and it wasn't bonded anymore. So now I've got a nose cup full of water, I try and clear it, I'm thinking, oh, maybe I've got some hair in my mask, I don't realize where the leak is underwater. I clear it, clear it again, take it off, put it back on, clear it. No, still leaking, still leaking, just filling up the water to the brim there. Uh, so I actually swapped out my mask and deployed my backup mask. After the dive is when I took the mask off, and was, or took the mask out of my pocket and was like, what is going on with my primary mask? 
and found out that yeah, there's a massive failure point right there. So, any mask that has a seam, a joint, a frame to it has additional failure points. How many times do I have to learn my own lessons? Less failure points is always better than more failure points. So from now on, for me, it's always going to be frameless masks, single piece of silicon holding a lens in place, uh, less things that can go wrong with it. I will save the strap as a spare and this is going in the garbage. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the differences between a framed and a frameless mask. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, give it the old thumbs up and share it with your dive buddies. And again, I cannot overstate how important selecting the right mask for your face shape to get a good fit, get comfort, is to you enjoying your scuba diving experiences. So we will make more videos on this topics to come. I'm sure in the near future. If you have a topic you would like us to cover in a quick tip style video, put it down in the comments section below. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already because it helps us out to keep making these videos. And until next time, my name's James. This was your Divers Ready video for this week. Dive safe, dive often.